Welcome back. Our guest on this episode of Tea Time is the music pastor and the first lady of Revival Assembly Church. She's a Kenyan based in Nigeria and a multiple award-winning gospel artist, not only in her home country, Kenya, but also globally. After receiving honorary award by the head of state, she was appointed Kenya's national and global tourism cultural ambassador by Kenya government. She represented Kenya recently at the Masterpiece in Concert in the Netherlands. Her style of music is richly African, Afrofusion, and patriotic with five albums and singles like Ategesin and Tai. Let's make welcome the philanthropist and minister of God, Amy Cox. Koski Maduko. Thank you. Welcome Thank to you. The show. How do you greet in your language? Jambo. Jambo. Mm. What does that wow. mean? <laughs> Hi. 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 Mm. Jambo or hello. Yeah. Jambo. If mm. it's Jambo. Jumbo, jumbo. Wow. Okay, let's start. Wow. <laughs> Your homemaker, ambassador, mm -hmm. philanthropist, musician. How mm -hmm. do you cope with all this? And a pastor. And a pastor. And a pastor, yeah. yeah. And, and a just... pastor's wife. And Can pastor's you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> it's our whole ministry to be a pastor's yeah. wife. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's by the grace of God. That's all I can say. I never could imagine how I would have balanced all this all together, you know, on one plate. But um, it's something that I believe God has allowed all those things to come my way mm -hmm. and given me the ability to be able to, to function in different dimensions. Mm. So yeah. you said you, you hope that your music would foster relationship between Kenyans and Nigerians. Yes. How, how far is that going? How is that coming up? <laughs> You know, um, having done vernacular music in Kenya, and it is a gospel music, it's uh, from one of the many tribes of Kenya. And uh, many of my audience don't really understand what I sing, but they love my music, they embrace it. And uh, to my countrymen, to my community, it has become a tool of peace building and uh, building integration among Kenyans. And we have done that successfully for so many years. So having come to Nigeria, you know, Nigeria is the biggest market in Africa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and having been here, I've seen a lot of, um, you know, different kind of music mm -hmm. from what we do in East Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the past five, six years I've been here, I've been, privilege to witness Nigerians go to Kenya to mm -hmm. sing gospel artists. Before it used to be almost two secular artists that used to come to Nairobi for gigs. Mm -hmm. But now we have a whole lot of Nigerians going to do concerts in Kenya, which is a very good uh, you know, thing. And I believe that being here, we would be able to foster the same, to have uh, Nigerians come here, Kenyans come here mm -hmm. to give the African sound or East African sound to the Nigerians, mm -hmm. which I believe it's a, music is a very powerful tool in any society yeah. to pass message. Africa is one community. We are a global village now. How do we come together through, apart from our cultural exchange and all that, mm -hmm. I believe music is one of the biggest tools. And we have seen so many big collabs from with Africa, West African artists, South African mm. Kenyans. So aside the music, mm -hmm. as an ambassador mm -hmm. for culture mm -hmm. and tourism, what are you doing to help um, this um, relationship stronger? I think one major is now music, because mm -hmm. that's my field. Okay. The reason for my appointment is I've been a very big uh, brand in terms of uh, Kenya's heritage. I embrace culture in my music Clearly. in terms of... <laughs> in terms of words, in terms of dressings, mm -hmm. and my videos um, on YouTube uh, portray different sceneries mm -hmm. of Kenya, mm -hmm. the beautiful places in Kenya. Kenya has been known for the wildlife, safari, mm -hmm. and all that, <laughs> yeah, and tourism. So we want to market the people aspect. The music is people, culture is people. And uh, this is where we come in and uh, we have seen few tourism projects, events here in Lagos that has brought in um, different agencies all over Africa to talk about tourism. Probably I have gotten a few invites to Calabar mm -hmm. <laughs> Festival. Mm -hmm. I have participated in a few events here in Lagos to just you know, give a taste. And from what I have seen is uh, 
there's something unique about this end and the other end. Mm. And these West Africans are very receptive, especially Nigerians. They are receptive to good music, to something new, something interesting. Mm. And I believe that bringing the East African aspect to Nigeria, one of the things that we are bringing in, in tourism is one is the safari. People here go for holidays a lot. They travel for holiday, they love luxury and all that. We have holiday destinations in Kenya that we need them to be able to visit and sample them out. We have good schools. Tourism in terms of education, right now, I think we have a school in Kenya that uh, has accommodated, admitted a lot of Nigerian students that come there and board and fly back and in. So we have school, we have hospitals, good hospitals and all that, that can still, instead of flying all the way to maybe India or to UK or wherever, mm. Kenya too is like five hours away or mm. four point something minutes and you're there. Okay. So those are some of the things and majorly is cultural exchange. Right. Yes. So a lot of people... What? Go ahead, go ahead. So a lot of people um, don't know you you're popularly referred to as the village girl. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your upbringing. That's one, and then um, we'll go to some, just tell us about your yeah. upbringing first. Okay. I like saying I'm a village girl because uh, per se, that's where I was brought up in. Mm -hmm. That's where I got to appreciate culture and realize that culture is not uh, backwardness. Actually, mm -hmm. embracing your culture doesn't mean you're primitive. Mm. Because that is the, the westernization has made African child feel being African is primitivity, being mm. third world and all that. So they look down on themselves. Mm. So coming up from where I've grown in, my parents have done a lot in bringing me up and ensuring that they teach us that our cultures, our taboos, our values are very powerful and they mold you to be a better person in life. So some things you may never learn in school. Mm -hmm. Nobody will ever tell you some things, this is wrong, this is right, but mm -hmm. the way you are brought up in, you can tell a well brought up child, even from any society, not, mm -hmm. not necessarily because I'm of glad. the school, but their bringing. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because um, I think sometime in 2018, there mm -hmm. was a viral picture of you kneeling before your husband and mm -hmm. uh, that created a lot of controversy. Yeah. People were saying, oh, it's that yeah. backwardness. It's yeah. that part of the culture. And then what would be your word to the people or to the women out there that think mm -hmm. that, oh, we need to neglect our culture and start following the Western world where mm -hmm. you don't need to necessarily kneel before your husband and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you also made it clear that, look, that wasn't a photo shoot. It wasn't intentional. Mm -hmm. It's actually something I do. Yeah. So is that part of the culture? And what would be your advice to the people that are emulating the Western world compared to our own cultural heritage? Yeah. You know, the, the kneeling down, I, it was uh, spontaneous. Somebody took a picture. And I liked it. So when I was looking, when I post things on my Instagram page, mm. I look for a message that matches the photo. So that particular one brought a much appro because what you said, many people don't think, I don't imagine they believe it's slavery. Mm. They believe maybe your husband say you must kneel down and serve me. But when it's by force, then that is wrong. Mm. But in our African culture, there are things that we did. If you go, for example, to, to Tanzania, to Uganda, they kneel down to serve, even in restaurants. You know, mm. somebody will just kneel and serve you food. Not because you have punished them, not because you're giving a lot of money, but it's, it's, it's honor. Yeah, it's a culture. Here in Nigeria, I think this is one of the home of very serious cultural practices. Mm. And one of them is kneeling down. So I tried to, to, to uh, you know, highlight that and explain which finally it landed, but it was trending for all kinds of reasons. Mm -hmm. But we kneel down, we do what we do because of the values, is what we believe in, is mm -hmm. not what we are forced to do. Mm -hmm. And as uh, people, you know, the platform we have now in the community, musically, what I have now, I believe that when you have a lot of people that follow you for one reason or the other, you owe them value. What do you teach them? What do you leave behind? And what I believe is that with my following, I want them to embrace who they are. When I say culture, when I say be proud of your heritage or your roots, it's yourself. Because that's your identity. Mm -hmm. You are Nigerian because 
all the things that Nigeria represent, you carry it. So one is our cultural, you know, attributes. We have problem now with young girls bleaching, mm. right? And there are different levels of bleaching. For example, when I came to this end, that's how I learned. So <laughs> there is the real thing. There is the effect. There is the, those who are trying this. So many people have landed into very, very strong chemicals that have affected their lives in trying to be like. Something told somebody that, okay, being a light-skinned person, you'll be much appreciated than being dark. Mm. So how about teaching young girls that black is gold? You can be mm. black and be beautiful. beautiful. This is what the world is looking for now. Yeah. Black is Kenyan music, is African music. See, Western world, secular and gospel. They are now singing African songs, sure. see collaborations with the Nigerian artists from the West. Mm -hmm. If you go to American churches now, you won't miss one or two songs from Nigeria yeah. or Swahili songs. So this is what we want to build and preach the African culture. Okay, let's, let's, let's talk about your role as a pastor's mm -hmm. wife. So, I mean, that role automatically puts you in a position to yeah. mentor young women. Yeah. And we are in the age of um, people advocating for gender equality. But when you look at the Bible, in the true sense of it, mm -hmm. they'll tell you it was set in the patriarchal mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. So how do you balance your teaching mm -hmm. to be able to embrace gender equality and also hold up the values in the Bible? Yeah. I don't believe that uh, as much as the Bible, when it says he, it refers to he or she. That's the generalization mm -hmm. that the person, person, persona in the Bible, when they say he will be, it refers mm -hmm. to a man or a woman. A woman yeah. So there's no gender. Sure. But mm -hmm. I believe that being a Christian, the Bible has always been fair, balanced. It depends on which dimension you're looking at or perspective. But the Bible is the most rich and neutral ground for all of us. Mm -hmm. It has values that it can pass to women, men, and children, likewise to the young people. So what I have been privileged, you know, coming to Nigeria, I never thought first I would be a pastor's wife. It never mm -hmm. crossed my mind. <laughs> and it's a huge responsibility having people like the ministry I mean. I, we pastor people that are way older than me, for example, majority. Uh, but the fact that my husband has allowed me to be myself, I would be example of being in Nigeria, you know, being apostle's wife, I would be tying my gile every Sunday. <laughs> Maybe I would wear a hat and all that. I've kept this low cut for many years. This is my brand. And he has allowed me to keep my brand, Emiko's gay you know, in terms of music, and then keep my hair short. Mm -hmm. So I'll tie gilly when I want. And then when I'm not able to, I'm not privileged to be able to do wig, I've never done it. And if I do it, I would look funny. Mm -hmm. So. Why well, do you think so? You haven't tried it, so you don't know. <laughs> no, you know, you should know what suits you. <laughs> With my, this, my, I know myself. So the, that won't work for me. It's like telling somebody to, to put on short hair. They would do it for a short time and they give up. But it's a huge responsibility because many women and young girls look up to you. And what you give them, I believe in practicality. What the Bible says and what you feel that is workable. For example, we've had so many women suffering in terms of marriages, relationships. You know, some marriages are torture. Mm -hmm. Some relationships are torture. The, as much as the Bible says divorce is not good. But to what extent? How do we protect women from being enslaved and say, okay, I can't do this because I'm a, I'm a Christian. Let me just hang in there because I'm a woman, let, let, because the Bible says I should not know. It, it's liberal. It reaches a point where we say, okay, when it has crossed this line, you can't take another straw of it. You leave for your sake and for the sake of other people. Mm -hmm. So it is good to be practical as much as we are spiritual. Mm. So we pray, but there are things we must reason <laughs> is our heads. So one, protecting women from gender-based violence. And one of the things that I'm driving right now is mental health. Okay. Mm. Yes, and majorly among women, because we've had the highest number of depression or women, you know, committing suicide, 
or you know depressed because of one reason or the other and when you're depressed you know you can't even be productive that statistically speaking because um, yes right now women are prone to more depression than men women yes. are prone to suicidal attempts than men i believe so okay. from the from the from what is happening now in the society one is the same thing that she had highlighted before like being an african woman before you get the independence or the confidence to be yourself or to stand for yourself, there is the society aspect, there is the community aspect, what is the expect, our cultural practices, there is the positive side and the negative part of it. What are we fighting from the negative part of it? Women were never, you know, <laughs> taken seriously. Like women were the lesser being in courts mm -hmm. in our cultures. So we are now coming up and say women can. They can do it. They can lead. They can speak. Okay. Um, <laughs> we're almost out of time. I just want to talk about your music. Yeah. What are you doing now? What is, it that you, what is that thing you want to put out there for people to watch out for? Yeah. You know, I'm an Igbo woman. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Go Igbo girls. Igbo girls in the house. Raise your hand. Yes. Raise so. your hand. Ah, she has denied. She's Igbo. She denied. Oh, my She's God. She's Igbo by marriage. She, but, but you are Igbo. Our time is, our time is almost up. But you know our your culture. Music. Once mm. you go there. Mm -hmm. you, 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 your part, you know, we will be, you're that. married yes, somewhere, yes, mm -hmm. you give up everything, including mm -hmm. your own dialect. So, I love the Igbo songs and all that. The language, Kedu, Kachifo, Kakim. You see, so I, I incorporate one or two few words in my songs. Mm -hmm. So, the, the first song that is the title of our upcoming album is titled Thai. Tai has uh, some Yeah, I'm listening to that one. Yeah, we does. need to wrap up, but it's... let me end the show and then you sing us out. Yeah. I wish you had more time for your I music, you, but um, you yeah. So I have two collabs coming up okay. Okay. with Messi Chinua. Mm. We are releasing a song in early next year. We have already recorded. We also recorded a song with Snatch. Oh. When I came here, Snatch really well. She's my friend. Looking so. forward to that. We, All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is where we draw the curtain on the show. Um, we've been chatting with Emi Koski, Madu Buko. I mm -hmm. hope I got that right. Mm -hmm. And of course, thank you goes to Michael Anko, Sewa Oluwa Ritu, and Ife Oluwa Shunkaye. My name is Elsie Godwin saying thank you for watching. And of course, she's singing us out. This is the time where you sing. Okay. Town at Nileo. Kawat in a lil, O Gero. I a chill. A make a skull, a make it with O Gero. I a chill.